Hello, my name is Jeanette Stock and I'm both an artist and a scientist. And in today's workshop, I'm going to show you how to use both your science brain and your art brain together. Because I'm one of those people that thinks that you can integrate both things. Now, one of the similarities between science and art is that idea of observation. And I think that is critical to both science and art. Now, as a scientist, you often sit down and you are trying to work out how the world works, um, how all the things around you. You're trying to devise experiments to understand what's going on. Um, for instance, let's think about the, all the experiments that had to go into working out how the food we ate actually um, convert, is converted into energy. Um, and that took scientists a long time to understand. And lots of experiments went into working that out. Or how do we work out the weather patterns and how they work and all working together. So you can see um, how we need to observe and conduct a lot of experiments to work out how something's working. In art we also do that except the outcome's a little bit different. So we're often observing the world and seeing how it works and then we respond to those observations and we create something from those observations. Um, and so you can see that there is quite an overlap between those two disciplines. Okay, so what are we going to do in this workshop? Well, in this workshop, we are going to apply our science brains to making an artwork, creating an artwork. And I thought we could use shadows because shadows are a really nice way of converting something that's three-dimensional, like in this case we're going to use a teapot, to something that is two-dimensional, two-dimensional -dim representation of a teapot. Okay. So, what will we need for this workshop? Well, the first thing you'll need is definitely a lead pencil. We'll probably need some other things, like if you've got coloured pencils or textures or pastels, that will make your artwork as a little bit more interesting. But all we need to begin with is just a lead pencil. You will need some paper. Now, if you've got some ordinary A4 paper at home, that's fine. You can use that. If you've got more fancier paper, that will be fine too. Because at the moment, we're just gathering what I call our data to create our artwork from. And you might want later on to actually have some wrapping paper if you've got wrapping paper or a pair of scissors so that you can cut out the shapes and stuff from the wrapping paper. That might be something else. But probably the most important two things you'll need is one, you'll need a phone. So you'll need a phone that has a torch on it so that we can use the light of the phone to create our shadows with. And you'll need some sort of object now the one I'm going to show you today is a teapot, but obviously you can do a lot more, a lot more objects that you can play around with. So, let's get to it. Okay, so what are we doing now? So what I did is I, on my kitchen bench, so this is my kitchen bench, I've taped my piece of paper to the back there so I can start drawing. And I have got my phone here and I'm using a tissue box to lean my phone on so it doesn't fall over and crack the screen. So that's what I'm using. So the other thing I want to do is now place my object in the light. Now, this is where you can actually have some fun playing because you can change where the light is coming from. It's going to change the shadow a lot, isn't it? But what we're going to do is we're going to leave the light in the one spot and we are going to start playing with the shadow that it's casting on the back here. And we're going to move our object. Now if we look really carefully at the object, you can see if I drew my shadow now, my shadow would look very much like what we think of when we think of a teapot. But what happens when I change the object around? Now this is one of my favourites. Now if I was going to trace the shadow of the teapot now, you might not know it's a teapot, but it is still an observation that we're seeing from the teapot. It's just a different angle. So it's just a different way of seeing the same object when we're converting it from 3D form into a 2D form, which was what was on the, our piece of paper. And you can see again, we can just change it slightly. It might not look like a teapot from our shadow, but we know that it is still a teapot. So this is what we're going to, I did. So when I got this particular thing, I put it in front and I traced around the shadow. So let's do that.
Now remember it doesn't have to be too perfect because we're going to use these shadows later to draw, um, make our artwork. Okay, so I've got one shadow, then I want you to just switch it around, start moving it around and drawing the different shadows. Now what you can do is you can draw them all on top of each other or you can get a new piece of paper and draw each one separately if you would like. So this one is very similar, just the handle looks a bit different from this angle, doesn't it? So I'm just going to draw all mine on top of each other. Okay, and I'm going to do that favourite one of mine where you're looking straight onto the teapot. It doesn't look like a teapot at all. Not with that handle. Okay. So that's our teapot, but what if we do, if we try something different? Now this is where it sort of like has your interesting science brain in. So if we had some a pair of scissors and we played around with the shadow, you can see we can look at the scissors like that and they're going to look very much like the scissors, but if we change the angle again and I drew the shadow of the scissors that direction, they would be very different, wouldn't they? But if we take lots and lots of different observations and we draw each one as we're going around, we would actually get an idea of what the 3D object was from all the different 2D objects that we could draw from them. Now, when I was doing this um, workshop one day, so I said, what was something that wouldn't actually ever change the way you changed it around? And one of those things is a ball. So you can see well, I've got my ping pong ball here. Doesn't matter what angle this ping pong ball is, it is always just going to look like a circle, isn't it? So that still is going to give us an information about what type of object it is if we take enough of those shadow drawings from it. So you can really have a good play around with at this stage. It's sort of like collecting the data for our, um, our art experiment. Now you can go out into the garden and you can find some nice objects like that and see how they change, which directions you put them in. You can see this one looks very different that way. So we change it around. Um, the other thing you can do is maybe find your favourite toys. Like if you've got some Lego, that might be fun to draw. Or I actually picked up one of my um, toys from my bedroom. So I have Beaker here. Now you can see Beaker, whoa, he's trying to get in front of the camera. He looks very different. You can really play around with his shadow and how he looks very different front on than he does side on. You can see his big nose from the shadow. So once you've collected your all the different drawings from your um, shadow drawings, then you can take them and we can start playing around with them. Okay. So now we have collected what I'm calling our data, um, we can start making our artwork. So um, in this case, this is the one I just drew before, I have put all the teapot's angles on top of each other, the way I played with it. But when I did this the first time, I actually decided that I wanted to draw them out all separately. So you can see on this piece of paper, very similar to those guys, I've got the teapot shadows um, drawn out separately. Now what I could have done is I could have cut each of these ones out and used them in my artwork but I decided I'd break some copies. So you don't have to do this but if you have some tracing paper you might be able to make some copies of each of the shadows. So you can see I've got one. Each of these is a different angle of the teapot and I had three different angles. So there are plenty of things we can do now. As I said, we can start drawing if we wanted to. We could start getting our pencils and start drawing into the shapes here to give it a bit more definition. Um, but in my the first time I tried this, I was like, okay, what am I going to do with each of these separate different shadows? Now I took these copies and I actually got some of my wrapping paper. So I took some of my wrapping paper and I cut out some shapes, for each of the shapes. So there is one of my teapot here that I've got. I've got the other shape here and this was my other shape here. 
Now once we've got these shapes and different types of wrapping paper we can really have a play with how we want to position or create our art for work from the here. So we could um, keep them all separately um, if we did that. Let's move them all out like this. We can start overlapping things. So remember we're trying to give the uh, viewer a sense of what we saw uh, our observations. So we could start overlapping them. There are so many different possibilities with this. We could even overlap them on top of each other as we go down. And of course you can do a lot more than just three types of shadows. You could try ten and have ten different shapes and see how you could create an image or, or an impression of the object that you saw using these um, shadows. So that is one thing that we could possibly do. Now another thing was I actually took my copies again and I put them on a new piece of paper and I started to explore with patterns. So that's another possibility that you can use. So I put each of the, the, um, of the patterns, uh, the teapot shadows on top of each other and I started exploring different patterns as they overlapped. There's plenty of possibilities there if you want to explore that way as well. Now the other thing that you can do with shadows and looking at data is when I actually did do beaker, I actually took a number of different angles of beaker just like I did with... I took a, a number of different angles of beaker just like I did with the teapot. In this case I just did three again. Now what you can play with as well is sort of using the shadow um, on itself. So this was one of my beaker shadows. Now you can either cut out black paper or other paper if you've got it. Um, the other thing you can do is create a negative space. So where we leave the shadow completely white and then we draw in a negative space around it in, in, in black. So you can see once we have our data from our shadows we can actually explore and play with a lot of different options um, to create new artworks. Well, I'm hoping that you really enjoyed that workshop and it gave you some ideas of how you could explore shadows yourself to create a whole lot of different types of artwork. And as you saw right at the beginning, um, we could play around with different things like distorting the shape if we start moving the light source around. So that's another idea that you can use to try and uh, collect more different data and then create an artwork from that. So I hope you enjoyed that and um, I hope you have a great day. See you.